Wait, so how are you, what, do you know what platform are you going to use for a podcast? Like, for example, Buzzsprout, that's what I use now to, to upload all the podcasts. Oh, I just did a YouTube and then took the audio on MP4. Okay. So, so you're, yeah, you're putting I mean, that you're putting on YouTube. Dude, I really like I, I I like I said I just started to do it yesterday and here we are. Mhm. And is it uh do you have like guests on it or do you just kind of Yeah, yeah, yes. Yep. Yeah. So just, you know, interesting people, people I'm inspired by, like just whoever like just mostly around like finances and investing and stuff, but I mean anyone who I anyone who I vibe with on here. I feel you, man. So um so yeah, man, I, I came across your page through Angelo Castillo. He's another guy who flips products. Right? Yeah, that's my product guy. Product. Profit oh, really? you, yeah, you guys, you guys uh, talk to each other? Yeah, so he, I was actually the one who inspired him to make the book Bootcamp, um, the course he just launched, because I didn't feel like doing it myself and know there's tons of value in selling books on Amazon, but there's like specific process and stuff and softwares you need to know how to use correctly in order to do it right. Um, and I'd been on his ass for like, probably like two months. And he was like, tell me I'm busy, whatever. And then he launched that shit. He made it in like a week, whatever we, he launched it. I think it went live today, but as of yesterday, there were 57 sales already. So I basically Damn. handed him a thousand dollars and we probably <laughs> at like 1.5 right now, but it's a beautiful thing. And it's why people need to be on social media, even if forget making money, but just meeting people and stuff like we're talking right now. We would never have been able to talk. I interviewed a dude earlier today who has helped me a ton without social media. You know, I wouldn't know him at all, whatever. I wouldn't be able to get, get any of the value or give any of the value, but yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely big on that and then super thankful for it. Yeah. Just going back to what you said about um, Amazon, I mean, when he was telling me about, yeah, I mean, it seems so intuitive. You do, you get books, you see if it's, um, uh, the right fit like if amazon yeah, if you, if you just, make a nice profit yeah, but just there's nuances scan, scan yeah. the barcode and the app tells you whether it's good or not yeah but there's like some nuances like yeah the thing is that there's so many people doing it and you got to use these tools so that amazon yeah, can kind of yeah, yeah like fix the price because you know people do it manually or they do it automatically and Amazon does it for you. I think it was Scout IQ and something else. But yeah, so you use Scout IQ, which is the app within your phone to scan the books. And then the, you have repricing software within your Amazon account that you can set at maybe every two hours, maybe every day, maybe every six hours. It goes through and reprices your items. The problem with that is if someone comes in for whatever reason, maybe they're, they're only selling like one book or whatever, and they bring that price down, your repricer comes down. But that's part of the game because if, the item below you sells for 60 and you're at 61, but the next highest one is 90, the repricer will take you up as well. I'm pretty sure. So, and the sales velocity you get from repricing it affecting the market is completely worth it. That maybe once in a while you get screwed over by the repricer, but uh, in the long run, it's super, super helpful. It automates everything and it just makes it even more hands off. Yeah. So let's like provide some context. So when do you get into the game of reselling products, books and stuff like that? Yeah. So the first item I ever sold was 2014. I didn't really figure it out till 2017. This is all shoes. Started posting on social media in 2019 about it, made five grand profit the first time in December, 2018. So that's, you know, that's a good month. Um, mm -hmm. And then just ever since it's just been up, had my first 10 K profit month in July actually 11 K and we're going to keep trying to get hit that consistently. Uh, reselling mainstream of income, Amazon and shoes, affiliate marketing, social media stuff as well. And I actually started up in the past few months, actually running Facebook and Instagram ads lead generation for local businesses. So I'm in the starting stages of getting a social media marketing agency started up as well. Oh, so you have multiple things running now. Oh yeah. I think everyone should, as long as you have the time and like the drive, there's so many different ways to, you know, succeed and dabble in things. If you're young, whatever you have time to experiment and find out what exactly works for you. Like right now, so for my birthday, I came out with a new course and it did well. And now I think I'm going to start running ads to it and build like an actual funnel with it, like within a nice software um, and hopefully really automate something, find an ad combination that works. And I mean, the sky's the limit. If I can find a converting ad, like I'll throw tons of money into it um, and see how that works. So probably this week I'll be building the funnel and everything. And I started doing some stuff over the weekend but they weren't converting, but I was getting a good amount of clicks. The landing page just wasn't converting. So I know that now I need to fix the landing page and make it way more professional with testimonials all over the place and everything. Cause it's proven that the ads work and it's proven on my end when people 
come through my Instagram, it converts, but I need to be able to convert cold traffic. And that's where the landing page comes in and getting good content on there. Wait, so you're saying that your, your, um, your ads are um, using click funnels right now? Uh, I will be. Yeah, I think, uh, okay. but I previously have been just doing it through Gumroad Cause it's, I mean, it's a cheap product, but for me to be able to afford click funnels, I need to be doing a high velocity of sales. And if I'm running ads effectively, that'll make sense to be able to pay for it. Okay, so you have that alongside with your wait. This is for your uh, social media marketing agency, or no, 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 no. Oh, this okay. is just uh, like a for your book. Oh, for your, okay, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, so, how does that course go? How many modules? Yeah, so it's about an hour and a half or an hour, uh, depending on which one. Um, and it just walks through like from zero to or from beginner to uh, the actual process I use, where I'm getting stuff, how I'm reading the market. Uh, you know, what I look for in an item and then where to source from Marshall's because finding stuff at Marshall's is very different than finding stuff at a Nike alley. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, so it mainly covers sourcing and everything because that's where you make your money. But when you started your entrepreneur journey, uh, was your bed and butter this reselling books at first or do you do kind of sell everything? That yeah, you definitely. Uh, I still make way more money off shoes. Books is just a nice few oh, hundred shoes. bucks a month. Cause I actually being in school, I have one more semester like this is my last semester. I just, I'm around a lot of expensive textbooks. So I'm able to get them either cheap or just sell them on consignment for friends and bring in some extra income that way. Okay. So you like to focus more on sneakers now. Yeah. It just, it's always worked better for me. It's what I started with and yeah. So you probably sell all your sneakers on like StockX, Go. StockX and the Goat app, yeah, mostly. Okay, so what was like your first sneaker that you Yeah, sold? Gamma Jordan 11s, leg absolutely legendary. In the spring of 2014, I sold them. And then I, so I made profit on those. I lost money on a whole bunch of stuff and then eventually started figuring out in 2017 and 2016. Yeah, because like when I hear about people reselling sneakers, like they don't wait out in, in line anymore. They probably go to an outlet and get yeah, a whole bunch of shoes there. What happened with that was Go and StockX made it made you be able to sell anything fast because they they brought the buyer and the seller quicker closer than ever. And um, what was I saying? So they so it's an automated process. So it's similar to like Amazon where you don't know the buyer and the seller really. You kind of do on Amazon, but you don't at all on Go and StockX. And it's a live market. So there's bids waiting for you on items potentially. So you can sell anything. There's central listings for everything and there's buyers for everything because these companies are so popular. So is it kind of worthless to use eBay or Facebook marketplace kind of like StockX? Oh, and go, or? No, without a doubt. Or with like, not at all. Like people make huge killings on there. It's just what works for me personally. Okay, so you can still use eBay and, and Facebook ads. Yeah, I mean that not stuff, it always just depends on like if you, only go to thrift stores to find shoes. You're not going to be doing anything when you go in StockX. But if you only go to outlets, you can do Poshmark, you can do Facebook Marketplace, and all that too. But you'll be able to do go in StockX as well because those items will be new. Okay, and I feel like so because I didn't know like StockX was kind of like the Amazon of sneakers. Now that you put it that yes, way, yes, one hundred percent, yeah. But now. Um, it's all about volume, selling as many sneakers as possible. Uh, yeah, I keep my margins decent, um, like uh, so around 10%. Uh, but yeah, the margins have definitely gotten tighter, but the velocity has gotten so much higher that it, it still works out. You might just be selling more mm -hmm. items. But do you have like a sort of strategy where you either invest in hype sneakers and like maybe some is allocated to just... Yeah, whatever flips. I mean, whatever works. <clears throat> like a Jordans, they're coming out and I can make 15 bucks 100% because it's quick. I get them in and they're out of here. You know, it's another 15 yeah. in my pocket. Really, I've definitely seen StockX and they show the graph like how much, how many shoes have been sold. Very helpful. Now. Like ridiculously helpful. Yeah. Now, how do you know when to kind of hold and wait? Like for like a long, I don't do any long-term sne sneaker investing people do, but I just think it's such a fragile market. Um, and it's proven not to be in the past, but some, I mean, like people are very successful with it, but it's just not for me. Yeah. I mean, is there a way to check how many of a, like one type of sneaker, how many of them have been made to see like how rare it is really? You know, information comes out about that stuff, but I never really believe anything. You can kind of tell from the amount listed on like a stock X or a goat at any given time, how limited it was, but like stock numbers are released, but me personally, I don't really believe it for better or for worse. All right. So kind of just tell us 
for how many years? So you started since 2014 reselling. Yeah, but I, I wasn't, it wasn't anything serious. Like I wasn't making any good money till like 2017, 2018. And what was it exactly? It was like stock and stock X and go. No, man, those, time. I didn't get on those till 2017. So it was Facebook groups and uh, the occasional eBay local set, just like hustling, like yeah. not, not, no real business stuff. So once you got on that, it was just the turning point. Yeah, it's way easier to scale because you don't have to be sitting on your phone, posting in Facebook groups, bumping posts, negotiating with people, nagging them because they're not responding. None of that exists. You just, you have the energy and headspace to go make more money, go find more shoes. Yeah. I mean, from what I'm sitting right now, it sounds very intuitive just buy a sneaker and resell on StockX, but I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of nuances that one has to, yeah, know I to mean, sell a sneaker as properly. As, the, as long as the numbers make sense and the sales velocity makes sense, then there's nothing more to it. But it's just knowing where to find the profitable shoes at numbers that work for you and scale that works for you. Yeah, because um, I've never used StockX or Goat before, but I've used eBay. And, you know, you kind of scan an object uh, for the product and you see the for sales, uh, you know, on the filter, you can see how much it's been sold for. And you yeah. can kind of say, oh, I'm going to sell it for this amount. However, there's times where that doesn't always happen, where the bid can be much, much lower, or you can just break even with the product that you bought, even though on eBay, it tells you this is how much profit or this is how much is going to be sold for. On yeah. StockX, you kind of have to Because there's no central listing. Yeah, on StockX and go there. And Amazon, for example, there is a central listing. You get to see right there how many are listed, what they're priced for, like all that. Okay. So what do you think right now uh, is like the hardest thing to do in selling sneakers? Like, of course, going on StockX is kind 100%, of- You were 100% reading the market on stuff and finding profitable items. Because more people than ever are reselling. I'm not here to say it's saturated at all. Like, Yes, there's tons of people reselling, but there's also tons of people making good money. You know what I mean? Like the opportunity is there. It's just knowing the right information. Mm -hmm. And which, I mean, has taken me years to do. I also, like I pack, packaged up it all into a little course product people can buy if they like. But I mean, it's information that took me years to get that I wish I had at the start. So that's why I took the information and put it into an information product. Yeah. Like when I think of sneaker reselling, I just think of pure pure hustle instead of like I, yeah out. waiting in line and stuff yeah fighting with the Foot Locker website to, to <laughs> check out stuff but there's more of like a strategic uh like a strategic way of selling sneakers it's not all about hustle but there's more about knowing what the information is and how yeah you know then, it, right? yeah that's a really good point like every like there might be one one of an item you can buy but you might be able to buy 30 of them and if they're selling quick like that's a lot of money, like you might be leaving on the table. Like I've left outlets with 33 pairs of the same shoe before and sold them all in like two weeks. Like I agree more. It was, it's been crazy. I used to go super hard at outlets and then, I mean, everything going on happened, but so that's, what's interesting about, I don't, I don't think I've like said this on, on the air at all ever, but uh, with like Corona and everything, it made us make money more efficiently. If you know what I mean? Like people weren't able to, people still are, but less have been able to, you know, drive all over the place. It's taught me especially to source stuff online, um, to look into like other hustles, like affiliate marketing. Like I wasn't doing, I wasn't making really any money besides books and shoes prior to, prior to Corona and everything. And then like this month I'll bring in probably at least four grand. That's not sneaker book money. You know what I mean? Yeah. They've been saying that like, Retail is not exactly dead, but the trend is showing that it's declining and e-commerce is just skyrocketing, right? But yeah, yeah, with this, with this sure. COVID stuff, um, it is just, is, is it, yeah. yeah, it just accelerated it and everyone's shopping online. Like in, in your opinion, where do you think retail will go? You think it'll be completely dead and this e-commerce is going to rule everything at, at some point? Ah, uh, see, that's interesting because like, it's, it's kind of weird. So we were talking about this in a group chat, a few of my friends and I, a, f a few weeks ago. So there's a lot of aftermarket sneaker stores popping up these days because the, re the resale or the online sector of it is growing so quick, but the retail sector isn't. So there's a big aftermarket opportunity, if that makes sense. I'm pretty sure I worded it wrong, but like my friends that opened up a sneaker store um, in uh, July, Bailey and West, like they're doing awesome. They're, I see they're all doing all these giveaways. Like there's tons of people coming to the store. Like it's really, really cool. And it, it proves that the right retail, I think will always exist. Um, but definitely like you can, I mean, think about it. If you're starting a business, whatever, a local based business, 
and you can either pay overhead rent and everything and maybe be on main street where people are driving past or you can take that money and put it into creating content running ads and getting on people's screens like sure mom is driving the car past but her kids and her husband are on their phones you know what i mean they're not looking for so and so wherever but if you can get on their screens like that's a lot different and i think that's an interesting conversation to have over like where you want to put your money but like marketing wise like direct mail or social like newspaper like people are still paying for newspaper ads you know what i mean like i don't know how oh, yeah. expensive that is but like you you're you don't have to spend anything to be on social media yeah something that still confuses me is like um how is barnes and noble like still open if everyone yeah that's <laughs> interesting i guess because borders closed down a while ago like probably almost a decade ago at this point which was their like big rival i don't know i mean uh, yeah, I'm sure Amazon's put a dent in that, but they also, they've also been around for a while. So they probably own those buildings they have, mm -hmm. or maybe, I don't know, maybe they just have good, like long-term leases or something. I don't know. I really don't know. Like that's, that's the thing. Like that's a super iconic brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's where you go to get books, at least if you're at a mall. I just feel that any business that has like an experience behind it will, would kind of win. So for example, you would have that Netflix and all these streaming platforms are going to like drive the movie industry in terms of like movie theaters down yeah they but probably, in reality yeah in reality they're 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 about the same we don't really see in the decline i think in in movie yeah theaters. it's interesting i feel like uh really getting into some interesting topics i didn't get think we discuss here but oh, yeah. you figure <laughs> a lot of movies aren't premiering on netflix so that still gives the movie theaters a chance to get people, you know, they want it. Like I will go see the new star Wars every year in theaters. I like, I just will. I'm not waiting three months to see it on Netflix. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is something about like, yeah, I know this is like a little rant, but it just, it just uh, a different experience. It's going to the theater, getting yeah, popcorn, exactly, sitting down with people. Exactly. The things that you want to watch a movie with people and not just by, I mean, watching a movie by yourself is cool, but like having people around you, having yeah. like the, all the lights off and the huge screen is just a different Loud experience. ass commercials. Yeah. So I think with like any business, if you kind of have that dynamic of an experience, then maybe retail isn't going to be dead, at least, at least for you. Yeah. yeah kind of integrate that so you were talking about uh personal branding and how important it is because you say you got to communicate with a bunch of people a bunch of entrepreneurs now is that something that you really want to focus on like long long term really building up oh, your personal I mean, brand? yeah like i just i like it honestly i didn't know where i was going when i started posting stuff and i, I probably still don't know where it's going at all but it gives me an opportunity to not just like to sell to people but to reach people you know what i mean like to build relationships, to learn from people. That's like the biggest thing is that like people are out here just giving away like how they make money and stuff for free. Like people should really take advantage of it. Like I, I consume a lot. I, you know, get in the DMS with people, ask them questions, whatever. Like people are just like really helpful. Cause the way I see it is if I'm like friends with you on social media, it's not like we're in class together every day and that's my only chance to be friends. With. That's the only reason we talk. You know what I mean? Like I'm coming to you because you provide value to me and I provide value to you. You know what I mean? Like otherwise there would be no relationship. So everyone, like, it's so awesome. Like meeting people on here cause there's such like such good creative vibes and everything. And you, you get to meet people and it's not forced at all. Like it's either like it, it can happen or it doesn't have to happen, but uh, it's really awesome in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I also feel that some people, they have the notion that, oh, this guy's trying to sell me a course. He's trying to scam me. And there's a lot of good, honest people out there providing tons of value. And of course, they want to have the, the right to monetize their channel by selling a course, selling an ebook, whatever it is. But some people might be like, oh, this guy's trying to scam me because everyone else is doing it. Um, in your opinion, how do you kind of determine if one guy is actually a valuable source of information and worth buying from and learning from? Uh, I mean, I've definitely spent a good amount of money on courses. Like I'll buy anything under a hundred bucks if it's on Gumroad and stuff. Like I'll buy that shit all day. I probably bought like 10 or 15 this year. Um, but I mean, nothing over that. Like I, I've gotten burned in the past spending a ton of money, but definitely like you can read like, like, I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I feel like you consume their content and stuff and you kind of realize it. And that's the thing is you make all, you decide whether you want to buy something or not. You know what I mean? Like you're in control. Like, 
And at the end of the day, like, if it's under – the only stuff I'm buying is stuff I think is going to make me more money. You know, like, I'm making an educated decision that whatever I'm getting from that – we're talking only information products – will help mm-hmm. me improve my life, make more money, whatever, teach me some stuff. And, it, and in that case, like, even if you learn good stuff and you don't take action on it, you can come back to it or something. Or, like, you know that now that's something you don't want to do and, and you – pivot and go find something else and you also have to think about it all right like a hundred dollar drop shipping course whatever just for example that information is probably on youtube somewhere but if it's a hundred bucks and it's that information there from someone who already does it successfully and it and it's three hours of content whatever if you value your time over ten dollars an hour whatever because you could go dig on youtube all day to find stuff for free but it it would make more sense if you value your time for however much to just buy that content and see it in order here's step one here's step two instead of digging through a whole bunch of youtube channels and such uh that's that's just my opinion but i definitely like see value in information products 100 percent because i've bought a lot in the past and you know been successful with them but it's only people i've followed for a while i've consumed their free stuff like I, i know their brand maybe i've talked to them or whatever yeah, that definitely makes sense. Kind of how yeah, yeah. I, the industry that 1997, the 997, that like that's different. That's way too much money to be messing around with, you know. Like, and with all the like sales headlines and stuff, and how many people get screwed over with that, I'll never mess with anything like that. Yeah. So you said that you're still in school. You have one semester left. So you're doing all this while you were studying, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. All this- so how do you kind of allocate your time between going to classes, taking exams and, you know, working on your side hustles? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like I get decent grades and like, I, I like school, like my teachers are great. I get to meet a lot of cool people, but at the same time, like I, I know that there's value in, you know, posting on here, meeting people on here and that there's big opportunity there. So I definitely prioritize it as well and just make sure I get stuff done. Yeah. And do you, are you feeling like a job after college or do you kind of want to continue? Yeah, that's interesting. I really have no idea. I mean, like the money I'm making now, probably not, but if it's the right situation, 100% and it's a great environment and there's great benefits, like, yeah, I'm completely like 100% interested if there was a good situation, but as of right now, probably not in the near future, but definitely maybe in the future. Like I'm completely open to it. Yeah. Like what's your, what's your dream job? Like what did you study? Uh, so I just a business major, but I, I really like social media, like marketing ads, everything like, um, but at the same time, I think about it, like I get paid by clients, like a thousand bucks a month to do ads in certain cases. Like I would be, so you could either work, you know, full time, just example, like for whatever, three grand a month, or I could do ads for 10 different companies at a thousand a month. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And not have to commute or whatever. Um, uh, but de- I mean, definitely in the, in the uh, future, potentially, I've just got to kick a guy from this live stream. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> he's talking crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, completely open to it in the future. Probably not right now, but, I mean, maybe. So, do you think you have more of a passion of social media marketing and just social media in general compared to just purely selling products? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they kind of go hand in hand, though. It's the easiest way to sell stuff these days. Um, and I'm going to learn a lot from running these ads, from building the funnel, whatever. Um, but I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Okay. But when you, for, so for your agency, do you kind of work with local businesses or yeah, local, e-commerce? And it's, it's very in the infant stages. Uh, okay. like I just do free trials for people just reach out to them. If I can show them results, great. They want to work with me. Sure. Otherwise I'll just get a testimonial. Um, yeah. but I'll probably go like pretty public with it soon, but yeah, to so just run ads, lead generation, um, Facebook and Instagram ads. Cause it makes sense for them to outsource it instead of going to learn it. And just they can stick to, you know, what they're doing because um, they could either learn how to do everything, spend a bunch of money testing it out, time away from their business, doing what they know how to do and they've spent years knowing how to do, or they could automate it and outsource it to someone on a contractual basis, month to month, three months, six months, whatever, and get the leads delivered to them and put their time and energy where it's most profitable for them. Yeah. I was speaking with this guy, his name is Gerardo Perez and he does, he has his own marketing agency. He does all, Sweet. Like, yeah, he does like uh, Instagram, Google uh, pay-per-click ads and oh, i didn't yeah, know this I'll but to, i'll have to check out his page yeah he told me that he showed me on his content too that you can do ads on in on tiktok they're not as developed as facebook they're and not Instagram. As, yeah and but like it's it's hard because people on tiktok at least not 
like they have way less buying power than people on Facebook and Instagram do, if you know what I mean. But yeah. clearly, I mean, I was scrolling my for you feed, like big companies are advertising. So there's definitely opportunity. They wouldn't be doing it if they weren't making money. No, yeah. I always thought that only the big companies can run ads, but I guess anyone can. That, I mean, that, you think about it. That's the way it used to be. And now anyone can make an email list. Oh, yeah. Anyone can, you know, anyone can, um, yeah, anyone can run ads. It's cheap. Like, you can only spend $10 a day, $5 a day if you want to. But it's nice how it's democratized everything. Yeah. But I do feel that like, big corporations, they're kind of really slow to catch up you know, kind of have Facebook ads and Instagram yeah, ads I mean, really I develop. Don't know. I don't know enough to comment on that, honestly. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, but I say that because the company that I work for, um, I work a nine to five, right? And oh, cool. they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on commercials, right? And oh, like TV? Yeah, I think yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time I watched TV that wasn't the NBA playoffs. And even that, <laughs> I'd rather illegally stream on the iPad, right? Here. Yeah. Because they, that got me thinking, like, I, I, I listen to Gary Vee's podcast and whatnot. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Like, I, all these I big, think I listen to that every once in a while as yeah. well. He's like, yeah, these big corporations spend, like, millions of dollars on, like, commercials and whatnot. TV, yeah, and on a, local, on a local perspective, it's newspaper and direct mail and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't even watch TV, but when I do, it's all, um, what is it, Amazon, I use the Fire Stick, so sometimes it even show the commercials there anymore. But oh, I just, really? Yeah, cool. I just kind of watch sports and really I kind of yeah. stopped watching TV and whatnot. And even that, honestly, these days, like I'd much rather play sports than watch sports. Oh yeah. You know, like, and I, I hate to come from like a super like hustle culture perspective, but like there's things that I could be doing that would be more pr productive. Yeah. That's not to say I'm not going to be watching the finals and the NBA and everything. But other than that, I don't, I don't really watch like regular yeah. season NBA. Not really. So did you always have like the hustle DNA in you or was there like an epiphany, a moment that kind of, Maybe. Um, I don't know. I think definitely kinda. Um, but it was just more of like a hyper focus on whatever I was doing at the time. At the time, like whether it was like, I actually made and posted Lego creations for like seven years and went to conventions and stuff, and that actually taught me selling stuff online. Um, so that was like where I was. I was selling Legos at eight, literally age eleven. Like <laughs> I did shipping stuff like USPS to people giving out my address and like DMs to people I had no idea about. And that was like before like internet was really, or it was big, but like it's, it's can way more normal to like sell a pair of shoes to someone these days and get their oh, address yeah. and stuff. But I, dude, I was doing that shit back in like 2011 with Legos. Um, but so like that, at that point I was hyper focused on that. Like that's what I was doing. Then it was basketball after that. Now it's business and whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say it's like a super hustle. It's more of just like a hyper focus yeah and like and kind of like real interest in whatever i'm doing at the time mm -hmm. because i feel like even me like i a lot of people too where they have a bunch of ideas and they want to tackle everything but do you think it's better just to focus on one thing get uh, that get that get that, yeah, get that that established run, and then yeah i don't know because i right now i'm like sometimes i like want to go super hard like reaching <laughs> out to people i know i should for the agency stuff for like running ads and such but at the same time like other stuff's working as well so i don't know i would probably if i was like just starting out like reselling wise i would focus on one thing like whether it was shoes whether it was clothing whether it was you know amazon whatever um but definitely i would diversify as well eventually yeah, I just think kind of having one thing established, knowing what you're doing. Yeah, and once I agree. you kind of had that solidified, you can start. Yeah, I mean, that's how it was for me, honestly. Yeah, so you kind of felt, not not going to say bored, but you felt that you had more to offer with other business ventures that you more kind of just that it was accessible, you know, like you can, like I found Reezy Resales, like, oh, I know you could sell on Amazon. Like, dude, there's people making money with books. Mm -hmm. Like, I had, I had no idea. Like, and now I took action on that, whatever. Like, I see follow this girl on twitter she made nine grand as a month her first month affiliate marketing boom now i'm bringing it like i made 50 bucks to off affiliate marketing stuff like that but are you going wait do you only use affiliate marketing on your social media or do you kind of have yeah. a website you think, there's so many routes no no i'll i'll probably make miles dot miles long a funnel eventually like that might be where my funnel is hosted but uh no no website right now okay so yeah because you definitely have a lot of things going um, yeah. but do you kind of want to like in the long term focus on one thing and kind of be known for that one business or brand? Uh, no, I, not really. I just, I kind of just like the, the action. Ways. yeah. Like I, I, 
you go back a year, you wouldn't see anything about index fund investing on my page. Now, like I, I learned, I applied myself, I learned the importance of it. Uh, so now I post about it a lot. Yeah. So for all these sources of, of income, um, what's now your strategy and really building up your wealth? So do you have uh, like yeah, so take, take the, uh, one sec. I'm just responding to an Instagram live comment. All right, cool. Um, all right. Ask that question again. Cause that's going to be a good clip for me to put on Instagram TV. Oh man. I hate when this happens when I lose my, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, what's your strategy with your, Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Now so, yeah. so yeah, you have multiple sources of income. Now that comes resp- responsibility of building up your wealth, knowing where you're going to put that money to invest in the long term. Um, what's your strategy behind that? Yeah, that's a very good question. So I take the quick money, whether it's a shoe flip, a uh, corset, whatever, and I'm making it forever money and putting it in a vehicle that's putting at least based on past returns, myself in the best position at the lowest fees, which uh, right now is, you know, index fund investing. So that's why I talk a lot about compound interest, small amounts of money building up to large just because and I read books on it. I see the value in it. I see the way other people have done it. And now I'm going to do it for myself. So it's like every, anyone can flip a shoe. Anyone can, you know, make a thousand bucks online in a month, whatever, but can you keep that? And what I'm fascinated by is that like the money I'm making now, if I'm keeping a good portion of it, it's still going to be here in five years. It's still going to be here in 10 years. You know what I mean? It's still going to be growing and compounding. Okay. So you would think long-term you want to have that money compounded and with the Roth IRA. Oh, yeah. A massive. Yeah. yeah. So Roth IRA a max and then anything else goes into taxable right now and probably a SEP IRA coming into next year. Okay. Which brokerage are you using right now? Just Vanguard. I love oh, Vanguard. Vanguard. Okay. Is it, what's the lowest? Limit? The 6,000? What's, what's the limit so per 6, year? 6,000 for a Roth IRA and then um, brokerage. I mean, there's no limit on a brokerage. Okay. And like you kind of have, I definitely read some financial books and they say, yeah, by the time you're 65 and you put X amount of money in like every month, yeah, I've already locked you're going to be a millionaire. Yes. Yeah, so you, you already have a set goal to be like a millionaire right. by the time oh, you're by 30 easy. Probably by 30. Yeah. But you can't take out that Wait, So with the Roth IRA, you can't All take right, out so, that money. Yeah. You can't take it out to your 60, but cause I've only been investing for 30 years. I have like 20 racks in the Roth, uh, the Roth IRA and everything else is in, uh, brokerage account okay i see so the roth yeah. will be there yeah, yeah um but there'll be there'll be money in brokerage there'll be money in the sep ira and stuff like that mm-hmm. but if you were to take out that money before you, you hit 60 or b- before you hit that 30 Brother, mark, i you won't get... touch the roth there'll be no yeah to touch the roth. yeah but you do you will get fined right or so it's something like a 10 percent or 15 percent uh like more penalty yeah i i don't really know the specifics of it don't need to worry about it because it's not getting mm-hmm. hopefully ever gonna have to be applicable to be yeah now in terms of what index funds to invest in do you have like a favorite one i know there's vti um so yeah favorite. so i use so vti is the vanguard total stock market etf i invest in the index fund equivalent of that which is vtsax and that's the only one i do right now it just has a super low expense ratio and um, it's very well diversified. So that's what works for me. Okay. But I know there's like tech, there's a whole bunch of sectors that within the index fund that you can buy. Um, yes. I just didn't so, know if you had a strategy yeah, for that. There's, I'm not diver, not, I'm not in any like specific sector funds or anything. Okay. And I know index funds in that respect is very, very safe, but um, I don't know too much either, but do you think it's kind of risky just investing in just one specific index fund? Uh, I mean, if you think about it, like, all right, Vanguard is a massive company. You know what I mean? Like the VTSX is, I think it's like 3,600 companies right now. If either Vanguard goes under or the index fund goes to zero, money doesn't matter at that. Like the world is like money doesn't matter to us. Everyone's screwed either way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's not to say I don't believe in diversification at all, but at least for the first few hundred grand, I'm just going to keep it very simple. Yeah. And because you said you just turned 22 and they say when you're younger, you should take more kind of riskier investments. Do you kind of have like a risk bucket, say investing? Uh, not really, honestly, right now, like a long term. Yeah. <laughs> a long term. Okay. I think that's definitely a good, like there's no one right way of doing it. Everyone has your own strategy of investing long term, short term, yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, the guy I actually interviewed earlier today from my show. So he has three properties and 
uh, like uh, almost half a million in index funds and stocks as well. Um, and he's right on his way. He's 26. Awesome guy, you know, super nice. And he'll be a millionaire well before 30. And he set a goal like four years ago to hit it by 30. Now he's going to hit it like three or four years earlier. Sheesh. You think you'd like to go into real estate? I'm not sure. Um, I really can tell you, I kind of only been grinding on like the saving and investing stuff for like five months. So I really couldn't tell you right now. Mm -hmm. Wait, so I don't think I got that part where how much of your money that you get from like the total income you get a month, how much is transferred to your brokerage or you already maximize it, right? You can't put more. Well, the Roth is max, but brokerage, you can put any amount. And, and right now, uh, like I'm blessed to be in a great situation living at home, at least for, at, at least for now. Um, so the majority of it does. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I think having a strategy, just getting into the stock market as soon as possible is one of the most important things. I had this one teacher and uh, he was my economics teacher, I think in my junior year, my junior year of high school. And he's like, yeah, if you can literally start investing right now, Literally, literally, the math is so on your side. Anything before 30 is amazing to get started. Yeah, it almost seems too good to be true, you know, because it seems like- Yeah, that's the right? thing is though, it's not. Like you can- It's like, scary though. It's just, but it's, yeah, it's real. I, I agree, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's been, it was scary in World War II and if you held through World War II, you made a whole bunch of money. It was scary in 2008, but if you held through 2008, you made a bunch of money. Yeah, no, but it seems so intuitive but I think a lot more people kind of geared towards the fast money instead of the long-term money because this is well, almost yeah, guaranteed, I mean, right? I, I'm all about fast money, but I'm just oh, yeah. going to take that fast money and I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to get rid of it. Yeah. I just think that people, uh, especially nowadays, like our generation, they have that notion. Yeah. Of, we got to make money now and get rich now. And, and that's pretty much it. But no, I'd you can make money now. Sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's have, the thing. I could care less about nice cars and everything. So I don't, like, I don't need much. Like it just added security. Yeah. So you kind of live like a, a frugal lifestyle. I, that's the thing is it's hard for me to comment on that. Cause I'm like, just, I live at home. Like if I'm not mm -hmm. at school, like I'll graduate in a few months. So I don't like, I'm just in a very like privileged situation where I don't need to spend money on stuff right now. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, probably once I get out on my own. Yeah, I think that'd be beneficial. You know, you don't, if you live for, sure. for anyone, yeah. like, uh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying you have more opportunity to save money and potentially invest that in your Roth and IRA. More. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So for anyone that's just trying to like start entrepreneurship, do you think the best way to get right in it is literally just flipping things from your yeah, home? Yeah, take everything you have that you don't need anymore and sell it. That'll teach you taking photos. It'll teach you negotiating, making listings and everything. And you want it to spend any money to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course you focus on sneakers, you sell books, but are there any other products that you kind of uh, look for to sell? Like, do you yeah. So for Q4, I'll probably do some other stuff on Amazon this year. I haven't in the past, but probably this year. That's whatever they post in like the discords I'm in, like the Reezy Resells Discord, or if anything I see on Instagram, my friends okay. tell me an item or whatever, but I couldn't tell you right now. But do you sometimes go to like discount stores, say Marshalls, maybe a clearance section? In, in uh, not since not since Corona and anything anything that's nice, uh, like at one of those stores, all, a lot of brands I'm gated in on Amazon. Okay, because you have, from, from your Instagram post, I see you have like a, a bunch of inventory uh yeah a lot of shoes yeah. yeah so that's all stuff i'm sourcing online okay do you kind of have your own little storage facility to store all your products uh, the or? basement right now when i'm at school storage unit okay so that's all it's all packed up so you say you never had a strategy for for hype shoes or do you do you use bots for that I've been hearing people use bots. I don't do bots. any bots, but I, I go manual. And then I have friends that have really good bots that'll run slots for me sometimes. And I'm, um, I'm just responding to people on Instagram. No, no worries. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too much about bots, but I've heard. They're uh, very, that... very expensive, very effective. If you know how to do it right, you can epic fail. And most people epic fail, it seems like. But the people who do it right are inc incredible and, you know, get tens, dozens, hundreds of pairs. But how do you can get scammed? Like, well, how, how is that? I, I mean, you don't know? I, I like, yeah, the software developers of a bot could quit or whatever. They could take people's money. I don't know. But 
Um, the big like established bots are like they're in it for the long term, so they keep improving, they keep patching things. If night finish line patches this, they'll create a new one, whatever. Okay, but can you kind of describe what a bot is? I mean, all I know that the premise is you're basically there's a system where it buys. Yeah, all so be released. Yeah, it's an excuse me, it's an auto checkout software that has your info already, and then when it goes live, it. Ha- However, like it, it goes through and like automatically checks out. Okay. And what about cook groups? Are you in any? Cook yeah. Groups? West Bricks is a brick shoe group. I'm in West Notify is a cook group for shoes. And then I'm in Reezy Resales Discord as well. Okay. And how do you and find these groups? You just on social so media? So my friend, my friend Joe owns both the West groups and then my friend Reezy owns his groups. So I'm, I'm just in all of them, and, you know, okay. as an admin helping people as such. And then I get the awesome benefits of being a member as well. Yeah. And do they focus on one set of products, like just shoes or literally? Yeah, anything? so West Notify is all hyped releases. West Bricks is all aftermarket, under retail, cheaper stuff. And then Reese's Group is just all types of reselling, eBay, Amazon, everything. I haven't taken as good advantage of Reese's Group yet, but I probably tonight I'll go in and look through for some items. Okay, so if anyone would like to join like a cook group, they can go. Yeah, yeah you can hit me up. I can help you get in any of them, even if they're sold out. Oh, really? Just limited space for each of those cook groups? I mean, I can pull strings, like, but yeah, yeah yes, yes. But is it because he doesn't want to have too many? You kind of want to have like more of a yeah. They can't have yeah. They can't have everyone just in there because otherwise there'd be scarcity and no one would be able to buy stuff. True. I was so confused when I heard of cook groups. When I was talking to um, Angelo, uh, Angelo, he was like, well, "A cook group, like literally like cooking." I had li- I was so naive to it. I had it's, no idea. It's so it's <laughs> interesting. Like, well, yeah, because in the Amazon community, it's a di- there's a different term for it, and then in shoes, it's can, like cook groups is uh, that's what they are. But for Amazon, like it might be more uh, uh, like referred to as like a Discord or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like every once in a while, I'll go on StockX and look at what's being sold and what's being, uh, yeah, just looking at the products. And I like to see things of like cause, those sorts of like action figures sort of thingies. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, Funkos. I've never done any of that, but it definitely works for a lot of people. Like to many of us, I think if I were to see that, if I like before, like a month ago, I would have no idea. I'd be like, oh, this is this keychain probably worth like five bucks. But because it was cause, it's, it's crazy, crazy what I, resells these days, man. Yeah, I think that's why utilizing information and knowing what you know, see. you got to be able to read the market on stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because I had no idea that cause was such a big kind of yeah. brand that you can resell things on. You know, even just a small little keychain. Um, but yeah, when do you know when was StockX? Uh, when was it made? Because I feel like this is a year ago. Uh, I really think it was founded it. in like 2014 or something. I first heard about it in 2016 and then started using it in 2017. Okay. Because back in my freshman year of college, I had this one, kid, this one friend. Um, he sold a bunch of sneakers, but I had no idea how he did it. And mm-hmm. I heard StockX just literally maybe over a year ago. It's yeah. It's mainstream now. Yeah, it's neat. They've done an awesome job marketing because like there's no overhead or there like fulfillment centers, yes, but there's no re- like brick and mortar presence. So they can put all that money towards marketing, influencer marketing campaigns. Um, and they've done a really good job of it. And it's just a great, you know, it's a great resource. So people use it, people spread the word about it. Yeah. So what does your daily routine look like? Yeah, it's tough because when I have class and stuff, it gets all screwed up. But like a dream day, like wake up uh read like 15 pages go on a bike ride eat and then like just start whatever happens like now i'll hopefully have podcasts scheduled nearly every day i normally have to ship items um there's some days that go into you know tweeting and making some content here and there and then uh, a lot of a lot of outreach for the social media stuff so um Mm -hmm. that could be emails it could be filming little videos um and i've definitely got to do uh, more of that Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second. So what do you do exactly for your clients? It's just pure. Yeah. Um, so I'm really new to it, but uh, I mean, I've been effective. Like I have people that, you know, pay me to do it. Um, so just Facebook and Instagram ads. So it's lead generation. It's understanding the targeting, understanding copywriting, understanding what pictures to use um, and just how to best optimize their social media to get good return on the money they're paying for it. I think that's really cool because if you work with a lot more brands, you can kind of understand that market and say one day down the line, you want to create an e-commerce store 
within that industry. Yeah, you it's know interesting. What is it's, going on. it's so much harder to run ads for e-com because like they, all right, if I, if we run an ad for the local pizzeria, people already know that pizzeria. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the people who see it, they live in the area. So they've already heard it. Oh, you're offering a coupon. All right, here we go. But it's mostly just completely cold charge. The nice thing is you can retarget. So now I can run ads to a landing page, which will hopefully be click funnel soon. And I can, I can retarget the people that even come to it from Instagram. They come and see it. They don't buy All right, Next time you go scroll down Instagram, my name will be there regardless. Okay. I feel like for pizzerias, you mainly have to use Google AdWords. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't work with a restaurant just because the yeah. margins are so much lower, but that was just a good example. I agree. Yeah. And just, definitely organic. Like, dude, if I owned a pizza restaurant, I would be posting the best photos ever. I would be filming myself telling stories. Like I would be walking up to customers and making content like nuts. Is that one thing that you really try to focus with your personal brand Just provide as much yeah, content as possible? Yeah, Yes. You just I have to post every day. Mm-hmm. Do you, you just post randomly, of course, with this IG live, you just want to put yourself out there as much as possible. And now with this podcast, yeah, it's awesome just, getting to meet people and stuff like this is wholesale content where now we might have five, three minute Instagram TV clips. You know what I mean? No, for sure. Yeah. I think it's a win, win, win for everyone. Uh, you know, you and I get to learn about each other and yep. of course the audience, the IG live, and of course the podcast, putting on YouTube, putting the clips, yep. the, just the audience will start to learn a lot. Do you run any ads for your personal brand? Um, so I'll be running, I started running ads for the course, uh, semi unsuccessfully last, uh, weekend, but now I'll be hammering them once I get the good landing page up to see how they convert, hopefully prime some profitable audiences and, uh, like interests and then, um, get them going, hopefully make some good money off. Cause that's the thing. It's like, all right, like you could spend 300 on ads, but if your ROAS is, you know, $2, two, it's two to one ROAS, you're doubling mm-hmm. your money hammer that and you could potentially if you're spending 300 a day that's an extra six figures profit a year you know what i mean like it's just really neat once you break it down like that all right 300 or sorry like you spend 300 you get 600 back you pay pay mark zuckerberg and then you keep the profit like i'm I'm very excited to get to scale it up and hopefully find some good combinations Mm -hmm. i've definitely used facebook ads before but not successfully um how long did it take you to kind of understand a what- few months of going hard watching YouTube videos and trial and error. But now like if for a real estate agent, like I, I know what to say. I know like what photos to use and stuff. Yeah, you really have to know who your target audience is. Exactly. You know, people yeah. say you kind of create uh, an avatar of who your target audience is really think deeply and then run ads um, against those, against the people that you want to target. Um, I feel like it's definitely an art to run ads and yeah. Yeah. And I'll be forever. Like I'm, I still only started doing it two months ago, but it's neat to be able to do it and be able to help people as well. Um, yeah. So I got to run in a few minutes, uh, but I definitely appreciate you having me on. Um, There's one more thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're so where can people find you? What social media? uh, Yeah. So Instagram flips for miles. Uh, that's just flips number four miles on Twitter. M I L E S L O N G S T R E T H miles Longstreth. Um, and then LinkedIn, there's a Facebook page, just same thing. Miles Longstreth and YouTube miles Longstreth as well now. And then Apple podcast coming up as well. I got it, man. So yeah, I really do appreciate you being on the show, man. Yeah, and- dude, thanks a lot. This was an awesome, like really long conversation. We got tons of good value in here. Got some awesome guys in Instagram live yeah. here as well. Um, so I, I really appreciate it for sure. And I'm, I'm glad to see like you, how long ago did you start this? Uh, technically like six months ago, but I rebranded mm-hmm. everything. So okay, like, months ago, maybe. Yeah, sweet. No, yeah. awesome to see. It's, it's great for the community. You know, you're interviewing my friends. You got me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, all you're doing. For sure, bro. So I'll notify you once the podcast is uploaded, all right? Awesome. All right, thanks. All right, cool, Miles. Take care, all right? See you, bro. See you.